You can't see it, but what I'm doing right now is sketching something with my fingers in 3D space. I'm wearing a HoloLens 2, and it's now going to be available today to people who want to explore with it. This is an expensive headset, and it's an enterprise-focused headset, but it's designed to be more comfortable, to fit over my glasses, and to be worn for longer periods of time. In fact, it doesn't use any controller, which at first threw me off, but the hand tracking and the eye tracking make it so that you can start grabbing things and turning things, and it starts to feel intuitive, and maybe you start to forget, like I did, that I was wearing a headset at all. Show hand raise. Oh yeah. Navigating gets really cool and kind of feels superhero-ish. Um, in the main menu, if you want to control and open apps with HoloLens 2, it casts out these beams from your hands. So I'm pointing across the room and I see this hand ray. And then if I want to open it up, I just point it down and then I tap my fingers together and the app opens. The field of view is big enough that even though you do get some cutoff, uh, you can see most of the stuff perfectly fine. And there's a turbine that's here that's spinning that's a 3D object. Now, if you want to share a 3D object with somebody and then say, how do I look at it? Now I could walk around it, get in close and drag it around like a, like a mouse on a screen. I can take it and pinch to make it larger or smaller by grabbing an edge. I can take both hands and shift it around and do that. And the weirdest thing is that there's a little blue box and I can tap so that it can follow me. Oh, hi turbine, you're following me behind me. And my hand, if you're holding your hand up to the virtual object in front of it, it won't overlap like you would get on a phone app, which is pretty awesome. Also, eye tracking is new. There really are not that many devices that do eye tracking, and the ability to track what you're looking at is interesting and opens up opportunities. So what you'd actually use this for is a good question. Microsoft is definitely targeted at training because you could create some sort of a more complicated 3D space. It could be pretty large. It could guide you step by step by with these floating dotted arrows that will tell you where everything is and you can go over and interact with that space. And that toolkit is supposed to be easy enough for businesses to use and put together. Or if you're in, a, you know, in this room and you say, well, this is what you want to do when you first go into the room. And then there's this arrow that would point over to like the bookshelf and I would start there. HoloLens 2 costs $3,500 or more for bundles with Microsoft software. $3,500 is much more expensive than say your average VR headset, but it's kind of in the territory of where the original HoloLens was, and it's where those enterprise air headsets and high-end mixed reality headsets tend to land. What HoloLens 2 does now is not going to be everything that HoloLens 2 aspires to do. And let me explain what I mean by that. Some of the promises for this, which involve doing things in the real world anywhere, or connecting seamlessly in the cloud to render really complicated graphics, are not here, but they're being worked on. It's not just gonna require that service in the cloud, but it's also gonna require really good wireless over time, and eventually you'll be thinking about things like 5G. We'll have to see how they evolve. I feel like I could just like stand on a street corner and just perform. People would just be like, I don't know, he's just fascinating. I don't know what he's doing. He's doing a holographic mime. I put that squiggly thing pointing out like that towards you. So just kind of whew, whew, just sort of like rings and then it's going through and spiraling out to you. And then I could move my hand and it's like my hand's moving through it 